tonight in both Iowa and Washington, where the former president, Donald Trump, is on the ground in the Hawkeye state for a couple of events today. Live look once again at the president, former president there. He's keeping his attention on the Republican primary, but also here in Washington, some of his former top staff members are rolling out what they are calling laying the groundwork for the next America First administration. It's basically a playbook for what day one could look like for the next Republican president who embodies the America First agenda. Uh, Philip, you remember how chaotic things were on January 20th. <laughs> Put it mildly. <laughs> yeah, January 21, 22, 23, and so on uh, in 2017. Th this is interesting because you've got basically old team Trump coming forward and saying, we're not going to let that happen this time for whoever it is mm -hmm. on the Republican side, yeah, if it gets there. That's exactly right. And I think the thing that we need to know here is that the Trump administration, they didn't so much leave town when Joe Biden was inaugurated. They just moved down the street a couple blocks. They set up AFPI. They're partnering mm -hmm. with the Heritage Foundation to try and get those resumes in line. And the takeaway from this is not just the sort of internal jousting. The takeaway is they don't want a JV team. They want true believers. And more than that, they want people who actually have technical expertise when it yeah. comes to running the government. Love them or hate them, they're going to be much more. This efficient. deals with, like, what's the next staffing going to look like, executive orders, policy, comms, teams. For exa One example that was given to me today was uh, Joe Biden had, President Biden had 3x the amount in the administration mm -hmm. on day one than President Trump had. Pre Joe Biden, 19 executive orders, first 48 hours, Donald Trump won. If there's a Donald Trump presidency or someone like him, they are not going to get caught off sides this time. No, no. But I'm curious to see what this looks like, because we've seen so many of uh, former Trump administration officials, all of these names, all of these former cabinet officials who are no longer affiliated, really, yeah. with President Trump. They've distanced themselves. So what, what's that going to look like? Who are they going to get? So here's some of the names. Uh, Linda McMahon, she was the head of the Small Business Ad Administration. She's basically running this thing. Uh, Chad Wolf, of course, the DHS secretary. Hogan Gidley. Uh, uh, been on the show, White House Press Shop, Robert Lighthizer, Donald Trump's uh, former trade representative. And from a Republican's pr perspective, um, Denise, is, is this smart for former Team Trump to say, hey, we got to do this now for if in January 20? Uh, 25? I think it's brilliant because it shows that he, it kind of reminds everyone that he's not just another candidate. He's actually also the former president. He's done this before and he's learned and he has an A-team. Honestly, the guy who was quoted in one of the articles today, Doug Holscher, who's running a lot of this, is an old Bush operative. And so they really do have an A-team and they're ready to go in and they're showing, they're reminding the American people by putting out this press release and saying, hey, we're making news because we're going to be in the office. Listen, Donald Trump learned it the hard way that personnel is actually policy, right? And the fact that he didn't have so many of these positions in place, nominees confirmed, uh, really uh, kind of handicapped him out of the gate. And it's also a sure sign, Blake, that he's already pivoting to the general election. You know, you saw his comments about abortion, for example, uh, that have been widely talked about, that he's already thinking about November being this far but ahead is he, right But now. is he pivoting? Because right now, I mean, we're looking at him not in Michigan or Pennsylvania yeah. or Ohio or Nevada or Georgia. We're looking at him in, in, in I, Iowa. I think it's his twofold tragedy. He's in Iowa on the ground right now to really give uh, Ron DeSantis a run for his money and take him out of the running. Ron DeSantis has put all of his eggs in the Iowa basket, right. evangelical basket, but he also has an eye on the general with those abortion comments and staffing up. Yeah, and I mean, on the Iowa strategy, look, Trump has a rocky road ahead in Iowa, I would say. Going back to his abortion comments in the evangelical vote in Iowa, Trump is looking to do a uh, general election strategy on abortion. That's not going to play well with a lot of evangelicals. All right, on the ground. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.